The U District are shaken after a weekend shooting that sent four students to the hospital. Now the university's president is speaking out. Police say three to five rounds were fired around one Sunday morning outside a well-known bar in the U District. Witnesses told officers two men got into a fight before one of them pulled out a gun and fired. UW confirms four students were hurt. It's crazy that's so close to the UW students and, you know, like being on such an active campus area. And I really think that, like, this really calls into question the safety of the area. And I know a lot of students felt nervous and rattled and they're hesitant to come back. The incident is under investigation and according to the University of Washington, there are no life-threatening injuries. So far, no arrests. SPD says the shooter took off before officers arrived and a search of the surrounding neighborhood turned up empty. UW's school president responded with a written statement. It reads in part, quote, no one should have to fear for their safety as they go about their daily lives. Gun violence is a public health crisis and we're committed to working with our partners as we collectively work to make our community a safer place for everyone. She also added that the university is working with Seattle police to address the root causes behind the increase in crime. Uh, here yeah, if you can believe it, they're taking things like defibrillators, the jaws of life, and these recent thefts have firefighters rethinking how secure their stations are. Firefighters work quick to save lives, but while they are away, thieves have been working quickly to rip them off. We estimated the, the loss to be between ninety dollars and $100,000. Assistant Chief John Hedgers from Grace Harbor Fire District 1 says one of their stations was ransacked this week by thieves. It's infuriating. I take it personal and... It's hard not to get upset when someone does something like this because they have you no know, regard for anybody else. In Kent, police say thieves broke into a fire facility and took firefighting and medical equipment from a vehicle. Armando lives close to this Kent fire station and says he's unfortunately not surprised. He says neighbors are keeping a close eye out on the station. Kent investigators say they had solid leads and made an arrest, recovering some of the stolen equipment. This year, other fire agencies, including Graham and Skagit County, had the same thing happen. I think a lot of these small rural departments are easy targets. Assistant Chief Hedger says for a rural volunteer department, losing $100,000 in equipment isn't just an inconvenience. It could cost someone their life. I think for people like this, they're looking for the easy, quick score. They don't think about the ramifications on down the line. If you're planning to travel this holiday season, you should book your trip soon. Experts warn airline ticket prices are expected to rise in mid-October. Camo Steve McCarran has some tips to save money. After two years of missed holidays and vacations, it is no secret airports across the country are getting busier again. That trend expected to continue well into the upcoming holiday season with airline ticket prices likely to be the most expensive in five years. If you haven't booked your travel already for the holidays, start looking now. Be prepared to book if you see a good deal. Economist Andrew Heritage tells me that's because airfare prices are expected to jump in just a matter of weeks. The three main reasons, high demand, with more than 50% of Americans expected to travel in some form of the holiday season. Airline capacity is still only about 95% of what it was before the pandemic. And the price of jet fuel, about 50% more than it was a year ago. Given that flights are not back to full capacity of what they were in 2019, some flights will start to sell out. And as that happens, prices will rise. Right now, the average cost for airline tickets from Seattle for international trips, about $970 over Thanksgiving and more than $1,400 over Christmas. You'll pay about one-third less for domestic travel. The hottest destinations here in the U.S., New York, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, and Orlando, especially over Christmas. But given the strength of the U.S. dollar, your purchasing power can go a lot further in places like Europe. Flexibility is the, is the easiest way you can save money on your holiday travel. Heritage says think about traveling the Monday before Thanksgiving instead of closer to the holiday or the Monday or Tuesday before Christmas. And try to return later in the week rather than immediately after the weekends. Also, add a buffer day to your trip in case there are any unexpected hiccups that are beyond your control. And keep in mind, the first flights of the morning tend to have the fewest disruptions. What I can tell you in 2023 is, is we're going to see airline capacity start to meet or exceed what it was in 2019. Steve McCarran, Couple News.
Kelly, inflation is the number one issue. The two candidates running for Washington's first congressional district say they tackle immediately if elected. In Como's Beyond the Podium series, we spoke with Democratic incumbent Susan Del Benny and her challenger, Republican Vincent Cavalieri. While both said inflation is the most pressing issue, their answers varied on the other top two. Del Benny says making health care more affordable and also standing up for rights is what she'd tackle immediately. Cavalieri says getting crime under control and securing the southern border issues he take on right away if voted into Congress. We need to make sure that um, we are standing up for rights, uh, standing up for women's reproductive rights, standing up for voting rights, um, and standing against extremism. Um, we have a precious democracy, and it is important that all of us play our part in upholding that democracy. And the southern border. It begins and ends at the southern border at this point, simply because of the degree of this what can only be construed as, a, as an invasion type force. You're talking 2.4 million illegals crossed into America illegally this past year alone. So the number is not sustainable. This doesn't get better. It gets much worse without intervention. Hi everyone, I'm Preston Phillips from Como News. Thanks for checking out the Como YouTube channel. You can see more of our videos right here by clicking on the video links for more news from the Seattle area and Western Washington. Oh, and don't forget to click the subscribe button below so you don't miss our YouTube updates.